bubbles, nine out of 10 times go back to where they started or a little lower. And the one out of 10 times they don't, they go near there. This bubble's not over in stocks or real estate unless this is the first time ever something's truly different. And that's the big mistake. Oh, it's gonna be different this time. Human nature, bubble, burst. So when you say it's gonna be different, uh, obviously you're probably watching CNBC and um, different people, they're, okay, the, no, you know, God. it's over. Time I to have to watch CNBC to keep up with stuff. It is torture, absolute torture. Because Larry it's very Cudlow. optimistic then. Larry, well, no, no, they're just stupid. <laughs> they're just brain dead, it's just like, Free market capitalism, the best thing, it can never fail. Free market capitalism succeeds because it fails. That's the advantage of entrepreneurs. When things fail, they come in and do something different. This is the greatest bubble we've seen in modern history and in the free market capitalism system itself says it's, we're gonna have to deleverage this debt like we did in the 30s. We're gonna have to lower the debt burdens. We're gonna have to make way for new businesses to take over where old businesses have been locked into old stuff. This is an entrepreneurial revolution made to happen. Everything the government's doing is, is preventing that. Propping up the old companies, propping up the old economy, trying to keep housing prices up enough. Housing prices, hey look, what do young people want? Young people want cheaper housing. They don't want uh, to pay $800,000 for a starter home in California or Miami. All of the changes that are gonna happen naturally here are gonna be for the good of the economy long term. Winter leads to spring. The 30s led to the greatest mass prosperity boom in history, 40s, 50s, and 60s, and the clear rise of America. So that's what needs to happen here. Everybody's preventing it. So we need different solutions. The government needs, uh, here's what we call the ultimate stimulus plan. If I were Barack Obama, and I had walked in, fortunately, into this crisis and had nothing to do with it, what a glorious advantage. I would have come in for the beginning. I would have hired some outside consultants like David Walker from the Pete Peterson Foundation or people like us who look at things objectively and say, where's our debt? Where is this? What happened here? Don't talk to Goldman Sachs and the banks and all these companies failing and ask them, what should we do? They'll say, save our ass, you know? Save us. And if you don't save us, it's going to kill jobs in the American public. Right, what, right. The, what would you expect? Right. I would have come in, I would have done my own analysis and said, look, I had nothing to do with this. We've just seen the greatest debt bubble, credit bubble in history. Yeah, we have this much debt, this much debt, this much debt. The only way to deal with this is for the government to proactively help the private sector restructure this debt, which means instead of throwing money at a debt economy and trying to keep going, boom, you know, boom, boom, you know, wait, you know, you're dying, boom, you know. No, you're dead. This is over. We're going to restructure this $42 trillion in private credit, which 23 came out of nowhere in eight years, back down to where it should be in line with real estate and assets. Let's say we write off 20 trillion. What does that save consumers and businesses for the forever? Over a trillion dollars a year. Every year for the rest of your mortgage, every year for the rest of your 10 or 20 year business loan. That is a stimulus program. The government, to do that, would have to take some of the debt burden. If the bank's gonna write off 20 trillion, maybe the government has to take five or six trillion, some ratio, and, and you do it strategically to say, we want the best banks to survive and the worst banks to go under, but we don't wanna run like the 1930s where everything collapses. Some plan like that would actually create excess spending power in businesses and consumers even though we have declining demographic trends.